So uh, part of our workshop was basically editing um, and adding data to women who were educated at the University of Edinburgh and basically our main objective here is to query that data and see it you know, in a, in a new light and visualise it. So we're going to be looking at the basics of using the Wikidata query service. So the whole idea with the query service is that we're basically going to get some data back and that always appears in this select option. So I'm going to say we're looking to select a person and um, that's just a name I've made up to identify the people and I'll just finish this first part and explain it afterwards because it makes more sense. So inside this where area is where we're actually going to define what is the relation that's going to define this person. So what we're looking for and I'm going to use, um, I'm just going to, in a new tab here, I'm just going to search for JK Rowling who is one of the notable people um, and actually, I'll just put Wikidata on the end of that. So this is a way you can help to construct your query. You go and find a person of interest or a notable person that should be on those query results, and you can often find everything that you need. Um, so what we're really looking for, first of all, uh, is that we want people who are educated at the University of Edinburgh. So I can see there I've got P69 as the property educated at. And University of Edinburgh is 160302 is the item number. So we are going to put that relation in. The person that we are selecting needs to have a property P69. Now this WDT is just a prefix that's required for us having a simple way to say, so the query service knows that we're talking about this property. And if you hover over, you can see we've got the right one educated at. And to, 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 to talk about an item, we have to give this WD prefix where we can do WD colon and then we can enter an item number. And in our case, it was Q160302. For the University of Edinburgh. Now, this is a basic query. We're selecting a person and we have a way of describing what the, the criteria are to find them. So we're going to run that. Now we get exactly 3,000 results, suspiciously exactly 3,000, but there's no, no reason why that's round. Um, but you can see that it's a very uninteresting set of results because although we do have the item links uh, and you can prove that that is Charles Darwin that has come up, we don't know what they're called. Uh, so an absolutely critical thing is to find out what are these people called, okay? Um, so we need their labels. And to do that, the simplest way is to use the Wikidata built-in label service. So doing it from scratch is a bit of a hassle. So normally what I do is I set up a new tab. And if you look at this example here, the list of countries ordered by the number of their cities with a female mayor, amazing query in its own right. But you can see here that there's this little section is what I want to copy and paste and it's the label service, and I'm going to do it from the until that last bracket. Copy it. I'm going to put it back into our query. You have to make sure that you do it before this last closing bracket. So this is showing everything that's our where clause, telling us how everything relates together, and it's got to be within there. It doesn't matter. Spacing and all this other stuff does not matter, but I will just tidy it up a little bit. So at the moment, we're set to Russian and, and then English, and I'm just going to leave that as English only. Now, if I run that query, nothing different happens at the moment because we haven't used it. And how do we use it? We type the, per the thing that we're trying to find the label of, and on the end, we add a label with a capital L. Now I'm selecting two things, the person themselves and their label, and when I run it, you see what that equates to as a new column. Charles Darwin are now much more useful. We've got some data and we can see who they are. So that's one very simple thing. This is just people educated at the University of Edinburgh. We would like to isolate women educated at the University of Edinburgh. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to JK Rowling's page and on here you'll see sex or gender is female. That's a P21 is the gender. And female is this really long Q number 6581072. So I also want the person 
to have a P21, a sex or gender, of, and it's another item, and it's the item for female, and it's this 6581072. Rerun the query. We've now got only 259 results down from our 3,000, um, but they are all female names, as you can see here. That means it's worked. And so you can see that by adding extra statements in, and a point here that every line must end with a full stop, it's a bit like ending a sentence. You've got to put a full stop on the end. So now we're selecting women educated at the University of Edinburgh, um, which is the, that's the set of results I would like to work with. But we now want to get more data back. Let's get some more data on these columns that we've got here. So um, what I'm interested in here is the place of birth. So that's property P19. But in this case, so I'm going to do this again, a bit like the previous lines, person WDT P19. But this time we're not putting an item on the end because it's different for everyone and we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to say birth place. And it didn't really matter what I called it as long as I use the same when I select what I want back up here. So now I'm selecting birthplace, and if I run this query, I should put a full stop on the end of there. It's not needed for the last one, but it's good practice to do it all the time. So now you'll notice I've got my third column, but unfortunately I'm back to just item numbers, which is not quite what I was looking for. I wanted their names. How do we do that? Well, it's as simple as add the capital L label to the end because we've already got the service loaded. And now I've got a name instead of an item number. So we're getting there. We're getting the dates that we want now. I would love if we could show this on a map, uh, but you can see it's grayed out at the moment because we don't. We know their birthplace, but the query does not know where that birthplace is yet. We need some coordinates. Okay. So I'll go back here. Well, actually, we can click on the place just to see if you wanted to find out well, how are coordinates presented. Well, here it is. Coordinate location is P625. So this time, I'm not starting with person because it's the birthplace that I want to know this information about. And you see it comes up there, things that I've used before. So I can just use that shortcut. This time, what I want is a, I want a P625. Uh, sorry, P625. But this is now for the birthplace and not the person. So it's another layer. We're finding a birthplace connected to a person, and then we're finding a coordinate location connected to the birthplace. So uh, what I'm after, I'm going to give this a name, and I'm going to call it um, uh, just coordinates. Um, and of course, if I run that, nothing special is going to happen at all because I didn't select it. So you've got to make sure that each time you want something new, you select it. And so you can see that basically select is where we see what we get back. Where is where we define how everything's connected to give us back our results. So now when I click run, we should have and we do a new column with the coordinates. And that is what magically brings to life our map option. As soon as it's got that data, it can plot these results on a map, which is far more interesting all of a sudden. So we've now got, this is women educated at the University of Edinburgh, mapped on a map by their birthplace, uh, which is already a really interesting result. Uh, but let's just go a step further, just to show that this is actually just, you can kind of go on here. Now I want some more information about, uh, about the person, another column I'd like to create. So I want to this time get back uh, the P, 569, which is a date of birth. You hover over that, you can see it's date of birth. And I'm going to call it birth date. Okay, and I'm also going to select that. And we'll see now, we've now got an additional column showing the birth date. And that brings another visualization to life. We suddenly have the timeline option has become available on our list. So there's a timeline. So this is the built-in uh, Wikidata query service timeline, along with all these other really cool visualizations. Um, 
And I, I'm going to stop there with constructing the query because we basically, that's really what you do when you're making queries. There are, of course, a million more complicated functions you can learn about Sparkle, but this is the basics, this is the essence of most queries. Um, so what I'm going to do, though, is show that we can reuse this query in other services. And I'm going to just demonstrate the brand new Histropedia Sparkle Query Timeline Viewer. Um, so I'm going to take my query that we've created, and I'm just going to paste it in here. And how this works is we are going to fill in some mappings. There. So we're going to say, well, what do we want to use as the title for the events on our timeline? What do we want to use as a start date? So I'm going to say title. It wants to be this, the person label. That's what we want on the headers. So I'm going to put that in, and we leave out the question mark. Now the Wikidata ID is basically the item, and actually we I'm gonna I'm gonna use this. And if I put person in here, what it gives me is the option to sort of uh, know what the item was, and we can double click and open it in uh, in Wikidata, which I'll show. We've also got what we use for birth date. So birth date is what we use for the start. Now image, uh, that's a point we would probably do with that, but I'll come to that in a moment. Uh, we don't need any of the others for the moment. I'm just gonna do the basics first. So now we have the same timeline uh, that we've rendered on the other place, but it's now um, it's now inside the Histopedia engine, which gives you all the zoomability and all these other kind of like, you know, it's a little bit smoother. And uh, But we haven't added a lot to this yet. Let's just go back and put a little bit more magic into it, uh, which is that if I just click here and go back to our query, we would like an image here, and, I, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this on because we haven't selected an image, but it's as easy as saying person needs to have a needs to have a P19, sorry, 18, which is image. And I'm going to call it image, and I'm going to make sure that I select it so that we can use it. And now on my mappings, I'm just going to say that I called this image. And when we submit suddenly the timeline comes to life with pretty pictures, which makes a lot of difference. And we're just going to go one step further. We can use our color code by option where we're just going to select another thing. In this case, we've got birthplace. Uh, and in fact, birthplace label is what I would like to color code by. And it's going to group them into groups. Uh, and so we have to put in a, it's good to put in a threshold here. And we're saying that we want at least two people before it becomes before it's called a new group. And so it's at least two people have to live in that or have been born in that place. So submit. Now everything's colored now. And if I click up here, you can see that we can now filter the timeline. So we've basically got this color code key automatically generated according to what we've selected. And I can filter and look at whichever parts I'm interested in, which is really cool. Um, so just to show you that this query, I'm actually, I've got a slightly better, it's basically the same query, but I've just done some slightly more advanced things just to make it display a little bit better. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate that just to show you. You can see it's a much more complicated looking version, but you actually will not recognize a lot of the same things uh, like P18 image person has to have a birth date. Um, and I'm going to, I've got some mapped variables here already. Um, and, but this time we did color coding by birthplace. So I'm going to this time do um, country because in this query, I'm also selecting their country of citizenship. So as long as it's there, we can color code by it. Now, you, another thing about this query, why it's a little bit more complicated, is I've also ranked things. So you get the more important, quote, unquote, people at the front, basically the ones that have the most articles. Um, so and if I bring up the color code, you can see we're actually now color coding by, by country. An interesting thing here is if you click on the no value, these are all of the people that have no country listed on their item at all. So they haven't got a country of citizenship. This is data that's missing. It should be added. So if I open up this woman here uh, with a double click, that's taken me to the item. And as you can see here, we are missing a country of citizenship. I don't know if it's going to be easy for us to find that now, but you can see the idea. We'd find it, rerun the query, and she would be, she would be uh, categorized where she should be. 
So um, basically, that uh, really um, outlines what you can do with the how to build a basic query and how to then use it in the sort of service. Of course, this is just one example. There are a million other places where your query could be used and new tools sprouting up all the time. So it's well worth learning how to spark a query. Um, the beauty of uh, Wikidata is the fact that, you know, we can call upon all the other vast amounts of things that it knows very simply. So I'm going to just make a small modification to my query. I'm just going to change the label that we're looking on, not for English, but we're going to look for Japanese labels instead. Um, and if we can't find a Japanese label, we're going to use an Arabic label. And if we can't find one of those, we'll use Russian. And finally, if we still can't find a Russian label, we will finally resort to English. Up here, you can see I'm getting the label for the country. And I want that to also be in Japanese for my filter panel. Um, and now I'm still color coding in the same way, but I'll submit that. And lo and behold, we now have the whole timeline in Japanese and Arabic where we, there was no Japanese found, et cetera, et cetera. And if we open up our filter panel, we get the whole thing in Japanese. And that is as simple as changing a few characters. And that is the magic of Wikidata. Um, so I think that definitely covers the basics of the tool. Okay. So, cool. We're done.